We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The global goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere. With no one left behind. We, we will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. Where no, no one goes hungry. Where no one wakes in the morning asking if there will be food today. We, we will live, live in a world where no child has to die from diseases we know how to cure. And where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. We will live in a world where everyone goes to school. And education gives us the knowledge and skills for a fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all girls and all women have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We cannot succeed if half the world is going We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy for everyone. Heat, light, and power for the whole planet. Without destroying the planet. We will live in a world where our economies prosper. A new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. And we will live in a world where our industry, our infrastructure, and our best innovations are not just used to make money, but to all make all our lives, lives better. better. We will live in a world where prejudices and extremes of inequality are defeated. Inside our countries and between different communities. Where people live in cities and communities that are safe, progressive, and, and support everyone who lives there. Where we replace what we consume. Planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. We live in a world that is decisively rolling back the threat of climate, climate change. change. Where we restore and protect the, the life in our, our oceans, oceans and seas. <laughs> We'll restore and protect life on land, the forests, animals, the earth itself. With peace between and inside countries. Where all governments are open. And answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And the justice rules. With everyone equal before the law. Where all countries and we their people work together in partnerships of all kinds to make these goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. These are the United Nations Global Goals for Sustainable Development. Let's, Let's get, get to work. work. Let's make it happen. The United Nations Seventh Sustainable Development Goal is affordable and clean energy. The UN wants to ensure affordable, sustainable, reliable and modern energy for all. Let us explain. The primary objective is for everyone to have access to affordable energy. Currently, 1.2 billion people are living without access to electricity. The UN aimed to reduce this number to zero by 2030. They plan to make this happen by finding new ways to generate electricity that are used all around the globe. For example, Manoj Bhargava is developing... He's developing a bicycle that when ridden for one hour can generate up to 24 hours of electricity. The UN hopes to substantially increase the amount of renewable energy within our energy production. Every country varies, but globally, fossil fuels make up over 80% of the energy mix. By 2030, the UN hopes to be working with more advanced and efficient fossil fuel technology, as well as increasing the usage of renewable energy. Energy efficiency is also a need of improvement. The UN hopes to double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency by 2030. 
If every US home replaced one light bulb with an Energy Star efficient light bulb, the amount of energy saved could light more than 3 million homes a year. Simple adjustments like that can make a huge difference. Which is why by expanding infrastructure to supply sustainable energy and educating the population on how to use energy more efficiently, we can reach that target. And that's what you should know about the 7th Sustainable Development Goal. So what are you going to do about it? Check out members.worldmerit.org and thanks for watching. Energy. We use it every day, whether it's electricity for our homes or fuel for our cars. Energy is essential to our world. You see the power lines, but have you ever thought about the power going through them? Power substations like these transmit thousands of watts a day for use in your home and in your neighborhood. But where is this energy coming from? Energy accounts for about 60% of global greenhouse gas emissions, making it the top contributor to climate change. This is due to the use of fossil fuels such as coal and natural gas for electricity and fuel. Burning coal and natural gas releases billions of tons of greenhouse gases and pollutants into the atmosphere each year. The most common of these is carbon dioxide. In recent years, carbon dioxide levels have spiked, and this has had a direct impact on global warming. In 2015, the UN created the Sustainable Development Goals, 17 goals to be completed by 2030. One of these goals was affordable and clean energy, which strives to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Some of its specific targets include improving energy efficiency, promoting clean energy research and technology, and increasing the use of renewable energy sources. The UN needs your help to complete this goal by 2030 and to stop global warming. Visit sustainableenergyworldwide.weebly.com to find out more information about this issue and how you can help. One program that I saw locally was something called the Earth Conservation Corps, and it was a legatee of the, the largest experiment in our history of National Service, which was Franklin Roosevelt's Civilian Conservation Corps. Or think about it, literally in March he calls Congress into emergency session. Within three months he's got 250,000 young unemployed men in, on public lands and national parks and state parks working to strengthen the country and our natural resources. And, uh, over the life of that program, three million Americans served in it. Eighty-four million acres were protected by it, which is the entire acreage of our, our whole national park system. And uh, 800 parks were built. Um, and a guy who would become pretty famous in American history named George C. Marshall um, with the U.S. Army. He wasn't a general at the time, but he organized a lot of the CCC camps. And so today we're very excited that General Stanley McChrystal who commanded our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, is leading our effort, our new effort. But this Earth Conservation Corps uh, enlisted um, young, uh, you know, 16 to 28 year olds. Uh, one of them, Lashante Moore, had been a, a teenager who had a number of children out of wedlock, had dropped out of high school, and was literally homeless on the streets of Washington. 
and she found us and we found her. And she um, viewed herself as sort of a problem for society to care for. And when she became a Corps member in the Earth Conservation Corps, was part of a small team that brought the, the nation's symbol, the bald eagle, um, from Wisconsin, actually. Fledglings from Wisconsin and, and Minnesota, where you're originally from, um, to the nation's capital. And, and these fledglings were, uh, um, became adults. And now we have multiple pairs of bald eagles flying around Washington and the Anacostia River because of these young kids who were in the Corps. And, you know, she told me years later, she said, I went from a problem society was supposed to solve to extraordinary potential as a young person that could be unleashed. And it was the Earth Conservation Corps that, that uh, made that realization for her. Oh, I love that story. Yeah, <laughs> I love that story, too. I, I, every time I think about it, I, and I, you know, um, 15 years later, I'm, um, I'm co-chair of that organization, still actively involved, and see how it... Uh, uh, we've just engaged these young people, and uh, they've never seen the ocean, and they're now helping to bring the national park idea to the ocean in our exclusive economic zone with the great oceanographer Sylvia Earle and the great um, uh, scientist uh, Jane Goodall, oh, who's really? on our board. So m imagine marrying, you know, Jane Goodall, who we've all seen on those National Geographic shows yes. since we've been kids, <laughs> and Sylvia Earle, uh, who's sort of the Gandhi of the ocean working side by side with these kids from some of the toughest neighborhoods who've never had any opportunity and now through national service are seeing what they can become. It's, it's extraordinary. In September 2015, over 150 world leaders agreed to a set of goals designed to move towards a more sustainable future. Goal number seven stipulates clean and affordable energy for everyone. Investing towards a green future will ultimately boost the economy by creating new jobs and technologies, reduce environmental impacts significantly by creating more sustainable energy sources, and increase quality of life for developing countries by providing more accessible energy. Our research discovered that we need to increase annual growth rates of energy efficient uses, technology, and infrastructure by 50% to reach our goal by 2030. Recent data shows that between 2010 and 2012 that 222 million people have gained access to electricity worldwide. However, on a global scale, there are still 1.1 billion people that do not have access to electricity and 2.9 billion people that are still cooking with polluting, inefficient fuels. To reach these goals, we need real solutions, real investment in sustainable infrastructure so we can reach all those who are in need. Global policymakers need to invest $1.25 trillion into renewable energy resources by 2030. That amounts for around $175 per person on the planet. Renewable energy infrastructure construction creates jobs in the energy sector, promotes business appeal, while lowering production costs for commercial and industrial practices. Wind, water, and solar power generation are a few of our viable options. Studies estimate that the production potential of wind and hydroelectric power could generate between 16,000 and 21,000 terawatt hours by 2030. The city of Guelph currently consumes about 0.04 terawatts of electricity a year. By not repeating our mistakes, developing countries are standing on the brink of an economic advancement into a new green energy era. If the idea of a green future is incorporated into the conventional growth model for developing countries, then our sustainable development goals can be reached.
It's called the Schindler Factory Museum, but don't confuse it with the movie, although part of it does cover Schindler's List. This museum is all about the occupation of Krakow by the Germans from 1939 to 1945. And in September, exactly September 6, when the Germans came into Krakow, what you'll find are signs like this. Basically, you're forbidden if you're a Jew to ride the tram. You were forbidden to use the banks. You were forbidden to go into certain stores. And that became life here in Poland for many. Um, as you go through the museum, you're gonna see other things, some of the horrors that took place here, as well as some of the inspirational moments, which we'll get to. One of the things you'll notice in the museum are signs like this. This is a sign that you may have seen if you lived in Krakow during the war and the occupation. And this was meant to terrorize because it says these three individuals have already been killed. And the rest of you on this list, if you don't stop your ways, you will follow suit. Much of what you'll see is photographic evidence of some of the crimes that took place. Men hanging as German soldiers smile for the camera. I'd encourage you to visit the historic city of Krakow and in particular, Schindler's Factory Museum. There you'll learn the history of Oskar Schindler and the lives he saved during the Nazi occupation. Africa is the fastest growing middle class in the world. However, 600 million people still lack access to electricity, a number which is expected to grow in the coming years as electrification can't keep up with population growth. Solar products are the best cost-effective solution for off-grid consumers using generators, kerosene and candles. However, only 3% of the off-grid consumers own solar products. Providing clean off-grid energy will make a difference to people's lives. We want to serve the remaining 97% of the off-grid consumers with products that are reliable and affordable. What makes our products special is they're not only durable and high quality, but also beautifully designed. They bring pride in people's homes. It's a matter of being very creative during the design process to combine energy efficiency with aspirational design. Even in the most rural areas, people use mobile phones to stay in touch with friends and family, access news and information, or even transfer money. This so-called mobile money technology enables us to let the consumer pay a small amount of money every month, getting rid of the high upfront cost of buying a new product. These spread payments take away the financial barriers and bring us closer to fulfilling our mission of bringing affordable and clean energy to all. SolarWorks is located in the Yes Delft Incubator and has an office in Johannesburg. We value the feedback from our customers and design according to the specific needs and wishes. Uh, we want to provide the people in Southern Africa with affordable off-grid electricity and deliver them an attractive product that makes them proud. This is our contribution to the sustainable development goal of affordable and clean energy for all. Our journey begins more than 14,000 kilometers from the United Nations in Papua New Guinea. As we look at the sustainable development goals, which aim to transform our world by 2030. The 17 goals were adopted at the UN General Assembly by 193 member states in 2015. The objective, produce a set of universal goals that meet urgent social, economic, and environmental challenges facing the world. What makes these goals different? 
Each goal is dependent on the other goals. These goals are universal, integrated, and transformative. The last goal focuses on the importance of partnership between the government, the UN, development partners, civil society, faith-based organizations, youth groups, communities, and the private sector. Despite the many challenges of life in Papua New Guinea, the government and people of PNG are making great efforts toward the SDGs. Progress will be made only if we work together. We begin with one woman working tirelessly to feed her family. Her name is Susan, and today Susan is in a field tending to her crops as her husband fishes nearby in the ocean. For Susan, her four daughters, and husband, their crops are at risk as the sea level rise affects the salt level in the soil. This means less access to a variety of food and a greater risk of stunting for her daughters. Susan says she's seen a rise in the sea level and also in the sea temperature here. There are fewer fish, she says. There is no reliable transport infrastructure here either, so the family often skips going to health facilities, even though malaria is rampant. Children are often delivered at home without acknowledging the risk. It's like a plan, two, two to three hours. Making matters worse, diarrhea is common here, as proper sanitation practices are rare. No got toilet. Susan has only an eighth grade education. Secondary school is not really an option for her family, as there is no secondary school nearby. Another big concern for her, clean water. The encroaching sea is threatening their water supply with salt. For Susan and her family, she says, their big dream is simply surviving, which has become increasingly difficult. Moving to Anga province, we meet Benny Pundi, a subsistence farmer with two wives and six children. Health problems are common here because the nearest hospital is far away. Farmers here rely on rain, so their food production is very unstable. The current rain pattern has changed, and it's unpredictable, making it difficult to plant seeds at exactly the right time. They're limited to a few varieties of crops, so their children are often stunted. These same children must also walk great distances to school, and rarely attend beyond early primary. All of the children help work in the fields. There are no close markets to sell their produce, so everything they grow, they eat. They have no source of outside income. Benny's family uses a basic pit latrine and has no electricity or running water. The family relies on firewood cut from the nearby forest. As for the future, Benny wants only two things. I like him. 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 And finally, we move to the capital of Port Moresby and the Five Mile Settlement. My name is Dorothy Robert. My age is 39, and I have uh, six children. Dorothy runs a small food stand she sets up outside her house each morning. I made my barbecue, selling drinks, sausages, sometimes selling beetle nuts. They have no garden, so they need to purchase all their food. Dorothy is the only person working, so the family is always suffering from a lack of cash. Her husband has other wives and many other children. He gives her no money. This means her children often skip meals, which leads to stunting. There is also no money to buy school supplies, school uniforms, and lunch. So some of the children don't attend school. In the settlement, everyone uses pit toilets, and washing areas are in poor condition when they exist at all. 
and the water is cut off frequently. Violence against women is a serious issue here. A 2015 Overseas Development Institute article estimates that two in three women in Papua New Guinea have experienced gender-based violence in their lifetime. Papua New Guinea has the highest prevalence of gender-based violence in the Western Pacific region. Sadly, Dorothy too has experienced violence in her life. Domestic violence is very commonly in the settlement. Dorothy feels trapped by poverty. She has dreams, but worries they won't become reality unless her situation improves. I dream for my children is I want them to be educated to earn their own living. These are the stories of real people's lives in Papua New Guinea. The people know that they have rights and are resilient in the face of the adversity they face. Their lives are directly linked to the Sustainable Development Goals. The SDGs are about every single person's life and improving each life in a powerful way. Betterment of a nation starts with the betterment of one person's and one family's life. The SDGs are the milestone for 15 years. 15 years is an accumulation of days. When you live a life, you live a day. So each single day is important if we want a change. Time alone cannot bring us a change. We are the ones who can and must bring that change.